they could not go home. Trained better. Mm. Trained better, more yeah. And uh, so NATO was quite good. I mean, they wouldn't have a choice. Yeah. Imagine, 1,000 tanks, 20 miles from here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a strange feeling, I think. It's very, yeah. very... Uh, and now you see what it is now, it's a, it's a beautiful landscape, it would have been destroyed, it would have been absolutely un uninhabitable. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, I'm standing here on the red line, you may ask yourself what, what, is, the, what is the secret of that red line. Um, military vehicles, except jeeps, were not allowed <laughs> Tanks were not allowed to cross this line oh. because we were only 50 meters from the border. Any crossing of a tank, M60, uh -huh. would have meant a provocation and could have meant a rise of tension. So they stayed only here and they were only allowed to leave the, the camp that side, the west, but not towards the port. What when snow? They knew it. <laughs> they knew no, but it. you told that if uh, uh, troops, uh, something happened with troops, they went with the tanks. Yeah, but on the patrol way, not here, not towards ah, the border. Okay. Because I must emphasize one thing, you see that little, this, this, this red and white pole. Yeah. This was the end of the territory of the Federal Republic of Germany and the end of NATO territory. Oh. And the beginning of Warsaw Pact, there was no no man's land. Mm. And they were either in there or, or in there. So I see how close they were. Yeah. Only one meter and even there were the watchtower is one meter be before in, fr in front of the, the fence of 50 centimeters. So there was no buffer zone. There was no buffer zone and no, no, there was no no man's land. When They were looking upwards, and this is the East German fence outside. So this was no, no man's land, but still East German territory. You might ask yourself, these three guys, uh, Mr. Kohl, Chancellor Kohl, uh, Mr. Gorbachev and President Bush Senior, what, what, what were they doing here? No reunification. Others were, others, other prize bearers were, 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 for example, Felipe Gonzalez, uh, Václav Havel, Helmut Schmidt, former chancellor, they also were prize bearers. On the top uh, of the watchtower, you see under, underneath us, we see, you see the actual uh, room where they listen to the radio and the shifts were taken to observe. This is the town of Geisa, the westernmost town of the GDR. Because, as, you, as, as, you, as I told you, his nose of the GDR inside the Western Territory, uh, westernmost town, not village, but town, was, was Kaiser. And uh, this is the ruin. Uh, the Russian troops were stationed right behind the hills. So once you tried to climb, there was a wire, you pulled the wire, poof, exploded 100 grams of TNT and 90 pieces of metal, big metal pieces, about 10 meters, uh, in 10 meters uh, you, could, you could kill 
seriously injured. Um, they had 60,000 of them on site. Полоса нейтральная, а справа где кусты? Наш пограничники с нашим капитаном. А на левой стороне ихние посты, а на нейтральной полосе цветы необычайной красоты. Капитанам невеста жить решила вместе. Прикатила, говорит, милый то да сё, надо ж хоть букет цветов подарить невесте. Что за свадьба без цветов, пьянка да и всё, а на нейтральной полосе цветы необычайной красоты. Спит капитан. И ему снится, что открыли границу, как ворота в Кремле. Ему и нафиг не нужна была чужая за граница, он пройтиться хотел по ничейной земле. Почему же нельзя? Ведь земля-то ничья, ведь она нейтральная, а на нейтральной полосе цветы необычайной красоты. The place, so you, you had always to carry your papers. Uh, so it was a very, very tough uh, regime. As I said, it's an analogy of uh, uh, Kreuzweg. Yeah. Um, but they have, as I said, different names solidarity, uh, comfort, um, pain. Uh, so you can, you can walk through, even if you're not religious, whatever you believe in, whatever. Yeah. You have a certain, but what does he think? There was a, a real propaganda war um, in, in between the two Germanys uh, uh, along the border. Um, one of the funny things is, uh, let's say, uh, very funny, uh, it's, it's grotesque. You know, GDR started to uh, start started collective farming by force. The people had to organize in collective farms. It meant, of course, uh, the harvests were getting worse. Uh, they didn't have enough uh, fertilizer, whatever. After the war, you know, the whole problem. So they had very bad potato harvests. So the story was told in uh, in the uh, in the in the propaganda. The Americans dropped potato bugs, potato cake. You know, a potato cake, and then they showed this picture with the American flag on a potato bag. They they dropped that and they they destroyed our harvest. Funny thing is that is an, an old propaganda lie. The Nazis also said that when when they had a, a bad harvest in 1944 or 1943, they said Americans drop uh, potato bag, or the British or whoever. So this kind of propaganda uh, went in hands and forth um, from both sides. East Germany as a young person, uh, to the west of half of you, and he will present you some insights, and of course there will be chances for you to ask him questions, uh, whichever they may be. Mr. Tucker, welcome at Point Alpha. Ich freue mich sehr, dass Sie hier sind und wenn ich Sie so sehe und weiß, wo Sie herkommen und was Sie auch beruflich umtreibt, dann beglücke ich das deswegen sehr, weil genau das das war, was uns bewegt hat, als es darum ging, heute Alpha zu erhalten. Ich bin sehr froh, dass Sie hier sind und er sieht besonders die internationale 
setting here in this room, he says that this was exactly the motivation earlier during the GDR to overcome the situation. I'll tell you something about the motivation of young people in the GDR to leave behind their families, their parents, their siblings and friends and try to escape from the country. So a little more than 23 years ago, after the peaceful revolution, uh, the Berlin Wall fell, as you all know, and immediately afterwards the, uh, the borderline that was 1,400 kilometers long, it is good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's through Germany, uh, day by day, there were bits falling, and also even here, very close uh, to this, to this uh, territory here, um, so it was actually part of the long history. Um, 
spread around Eastern Europe. Weil man sich nicht, vielleicht ist auch typisch deutsch, ich habe Ähnliches erlebt, als ich in den Westen gegangen bin, einfach nicht unmittelbar nach Überwindung einer Diktatur mit ihr auseinandersetzt. Man verdrängt, man redet schön. Für mich ist das ein einziges Déjà-vu, dass ich jetzt 20 Jahre, über 20 Jahre nach der Wiedervereinigung in Deutschland erlebe. Das deckt sich weitestgehend mit den Erfahrungen, die ich hatte, wie gesagt, als ich gut 20 Jahre nach Überwindung des Nationalsozialismus im Westen erfahren habe. Im Osten war das schon so was anderes. Soll ich wenn sich die Auseinandersetzung findet nicht statt und wenn sich die deutschen Schulbücher kommen, es findet immer noch nicht statt und das, was wir hier erleben, ist verheerend an Nichtwissen über diese Diktatur. How about don't forget it? I think he said that the, coming, the process of coming to terms with this had not really started instantly after the fall of the wall. It was like, you know, uh, covered a bit and let's not talk about this and so. And actually he's criticizing the German textbooks. Auf beiden Seiten, im Ost wie im Westen. On both sides actually, and he says that in the textbooks there's no discussion about this. That's his position. Class on a, on a level, yeah, I mean, ending like 18 year old people, they were coming from the Frankfurt region, Rhein Main area, so they were coming here to this institution, and he says it doesn't happen too often. Und ein Gästeführer war so schockiert von dem, was er von einem Schüler dort hörte, dass er mich rief, ich war in der Nähe und sagte, Sie müssen kommen, um sich das anzuhören, was ich gerade gehört habe. So one of the guides, the visitor's guides, he was so shocked about what of the students said that he called him to come over and listen to this. Sorry, I'm shocked. He says that the students said that their being here was the very first time that they, the students, had heard about the existence of an inter-German border. In about 15 minutes, so you can have some small talk, use the bathrooms, relax, do whatever, and in about 15 minutes, Ha, ha, ha. 